SCP-093 Mirror Test 1 Color Blue Subject is D-20384 Male, 34 years of age, strong physique Subject's background shows instance of murder slash attempted suicide Subject is cooperative in all steps of testing Subject entered the provided mirror while holding SCP-093, which emitted a blue color. Outside technicians observed that the mirror retained a true reflection until subject had completely passed into it, at which time the view changed to an outdoor landscape, heavily tinged in blue. Video feed follows in attached media. Camera activates. Flickers to view. Subject is looking out over the same field reported by technicians. Looks like typical lowland plains. Everything has a heavy blue tinge overlapping the normal colors. No discernible landmarks visible as subject pans view left to right. Only grass, weeds, and a breeze moving through the taller grass. No trees. No living beings visible. Subject moves forward as instructed, traveling for approximately 500 steps before something becomes visible. A patch of the land up ahead is barren and grass can be seen dying as subject approaches it. Approximately 300 steps forward, subject is standing before a hole in the ground. The hole has been dug using unknown tools of primitive origin. Pulley system engaged and the camera suffers a slight shudder. Subject is instructed to enter the hole, and after mild protesting, agrees to do so. There is no apparent method of descent such as ladder or rope. Subject relies entirely on his own hands and the pulley system to slow the descent. Approximately 100 meters of cable is used before a bottom is reached. Light source provided in field kit activated 50 meters down when outside sources become unreliable. Sweeping gestures of the light reveal nothing more than dirt even at the bottom of the hole. Subject moves forward with assistance of light source. Asked about the blue tinge, subject expresses confusion and says there is no such tinge from his perspective, and never was. Light is visible down the passage and 150 meters of cable has been used. Out of the camera's eye, sound is recorded of the firearm being prepared. When questioned about these actions, subject states justified precaution and moves forward. The tunnel turns from bare dirt to a concrete enclosure. Subject complains of a stench. The light source is revealed to be ceiling light fixtures, a series of which with less than a quarter broken while the others function. A series of six doors, three to a side, span before the camera view with a seventh door visible at the end of the corridor that has been blocked by what looks like generic metal shelving debris. Debris shows signs of rusting and is typical of retail store units, suggesting other human presences. Subject requested to try doors, in whatever order he chooses. Subject tries first door on right. Door is locked. Does not open. Second door tries to open, but does not budge. Unlocked, but blocked. Closing second door. Third door is tried. Same results as first. Going up the other side, the third door does open fully and light is bright in the room. Portable light switched off at this time as subject pans camera to inspect room. Room is bare. No contents, but walls are filthy. Subject states material on walls isn't dirt, but he can't identify it. Seems to resemble melted plastic, but is brown in color rather than black. Door is closed. Second door on left side has no handle, does not move when pushed. The hole where the handle was is plugged by unknown material. All doors are shaped in such a way that nothing can visibly escape from the sides, and space for movement is too thin to look through, even at ground level. First door on left hand is locked but part of key is present in lock from stem to the ridges. The back has been broken off. With effort, subject manipulates key to open door and immediately begins coughing, complaining of a stench. 
Walls of room are clean, as is floor. Ceiling is coated in the same strange brown material as the third room. In this room, there is a makeshift cot made from aged blankets with a pillow, a wooden crate containing open boxes of what appears to have been foodstuffs. Language appears on video as squiggles, however subject states they simply read cereal. A second crate in the room contains what appears to be empty water bottles that have dried out. A book lays next to the cot, closed, no title or identifying marks. On the wall is what appears to be clipped articles, but language cannot be read. Subject asked to remove clippings for retrieval. All articles but one crumble at the touch due to age. The intact article is put in a field sample container and seems the most recent compared to the others. Asked to investigate the book, subject begins to move toward it. Audio on the tape goes strange, and a high-pitched screeching noise like grinding metal dominates all communication for 3.5 seconds. Subject has not touched the book still, and when the noise stops, subject asks Control to repeat request. Control made no requests during that time as headsets were removed. Subject advised to leave room and notes that the door has begun closing slowly on its own and if left alone, will close. Subject advised to leave door alone and to investigate door on right. Careful review of the following 10 seconds of tape shows that as the camera pans, a figure is visible at the end of the tunnel where the seventh door is. The door is open only enough for a face to be seen through the crack just before the door silently closes. No detail can be seen. Subject investigates the second door on the right with no mention of anything seen out of the ordinary. This door, when pushed against, moves, and after repeated bashings, moves enough to view inside at an angle. A cork board is visible, with more articles attached to it. The top of a box of cereal can be seen on the floor, and what appears to be a hand laying palm up. Subject closes door and pans camera past door 7, which remains closed. Seeing nowhere else to explore, subject requested to return. Subject poses no protest and complains of ever-increasing stench. As subject returns back down tunnel, his camera feed does not change or show anomaly, but control reports a sudden surge in cable movement, pulling an additional 100 meters of cable through before going slack again and then tightening. Video feed shows subject ascending tunnel slowly while control attempts to verify integrity of the pulley system. Subject requested to stop ascent, but states he is not climbing. The rope is pulling him up. Panic sets in on both sides, and subject informed to ready firearm. Upon reaching top of hole, nothing is visible on camera, and subject reports nothing has changed in landscape. Then begins a return trip following the path of the cable. Traveling for approximately 900 steps, subject asks how much cable he has used. Control admits they are unsure due to complications, but subject traveled in a straight line to reach the hole, so it should be a straight line back. Subject becomes concerned when he states that more cable is visible now, moving in a 90 degree angle away from a point in the ground. Subject pans camera around full circle slowly. On film, behind subject, a crowd of 37 countable figures stand silently. Features are unidentifiable, and they are lacking the blue tinge that dominates the landscape. Panic breaks in control again, but subject notes only oddity as being the cable having an angled path. Subject tugs his end of the cable. It is taut and does not move. Control begins to reel in the pulley system, and slack rapidly winds. Watching the angled cable movement can be seen as grass is disturbed further down the angled portion from the reeling in. Then the line vibrates as it meets resistance and emits a twang from the recoil. Subject's camera pans back along the length of cable, which now appears to be slowly allowing more slack before suddenly all slack is returned and pulley system begins again. Control requests subject return following cable path and screams are caught on the audio with panic from subject. Five shots fired as subject aims pistol at something not visible on camera. 
Control reports being able to see subject returning toward point of origin, while camera shows wire disappearing into a point floating in the air. As subject passes this point, all cable is now in the pulley system, and camera films only the floor. Control reports that the mirror took approximately 5 seconds to return to a reflection, and SCP-093 remained blue in color until one hour after being recovered from subject. A vile smelling fluid was present on subject's clothes around his hands when firearm was recovered. This fluid dried quickly and was deemed insignificant of study due to lack of quality sample. Control personnel monitoring the mirror state having seen a massive human being crawling on the ground easily 50 times the size of a normal person, with no facial features and a very short arm reach, pulling itself towards the mirror before it returned to a reflection. Due to proximity, fine details could not be made out, but at least one observer noted the being appeared to have been shot from the marks on the otherwise smooth, featureless face. Field test kit recovered from subject containing a newspaper article that reads, Data expunged and was filed as item data expunged. Blue test. Newspaper article one. Only one item could be recovered during our initial test, and that was a newspaper clipping found attached to a cork board in an abandoned bunker. Most of the articles were in a state of decay, but one was firm enough for recovery. Most Holy Father announces progress unclean being cleansed. A rare public address directly from the Most Holy Father of the United Lands of the Sun has declared that the Blessed Militia has driven back many of the unclean who are skulking our lands now. New Rome, our capital, has been purged of the unclean and citizens are encouraged to come back to their homes. Citizens who live in the surrounding countryside should not return to their farms, as the unclean still roam the fields and plains around our glorious city and continue to grow in size. The Blessed Militia has developed new weapons which have proven capable of punishing the unclean and driving them back into the unfertile lands. Construction has begun of a system to permanently close the unfertile lands off from our blessed lands in each affected area once all the unclean have been driven away. The Most Holy requests that all citizens of our united lands bow in prayer and offer tithe to recognize the sacrifices of our blessed militia in these troubled times. Reports have been coming in that falsely accuse the blessed militia of having committed sin against the citizens whose homes they are inhabiting, as they travel bravely through contaminated lands. The Most Holy would like to remind the people that blasphemy against any who wear his marks is the most grave of sin, and unfounded accusations will be punished accordingly. We should work to support he and his men however possible, just as they lay down their lives for us. The sinful rebels who, 